Hello everybody, welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you're all doing well and welcome back to another one of these, The Importance of Videos. Today, we are going to be looking at Reese James. Yes, the Chelsea Academy starlet. Yes, I know what you're thinking. I've already kind of done a video on Reese James. Well, not exclusively, but I did a little piece on him in my Lampard's Low Knees video, uh, which I cover Reese James, Tammy Abraham, Kurt Zuma, and Mason Mount. It's a good video. You should check it out if you have not seen it already. But James is such a promising young talent that I wanted to spend time doing a whole video on him. So. Here I am. But before we get into the video, guys, you know what I'm going to ask you. Please do subscribe to the channel if you are new and hit the bell notification icon. But you know what? Only if you enjoy the content. I've said this before. I don't want people subscribing for the hell of it if they're not going to watch my videos. I want you guys to enjoy the content. So only sub if you watch the videos. So who is Rhys James? Rhys James is a young English right back that hails from the Chelsea Academy. He can play really sort of all up and down the right flank. He's certainly adept in the skills it takes to play in those positions. But apart from playing as a defender and up the right flank, he can also play in midfield. James is a big, strong lad. He's not that tall, but he's certainly built incredibly well. He's very fast, technical, and he's got a good footballing knowledge, a good football IQ. And last season, Chelsea sent him on loan to championship team Wigan. And man, he enjoyed an excellent loan spell at the club. He won multiple player of the months. He won goal of the season with an absolute thunder rocket by the way and ultimately he won player of the season. I mean if you think about it for a young teenage fullback Loney to come in on loan to his club and absolutely clean up all their awards for the season that's no mean feat. Reese James's dominance on the pitch was recognized early by Wigan. I mean I think he wasn't initially supposed to start for them, but when they saw what this kid could do, he absolutely was starting for them. And when they saw they might be in trouble, perhaps in terms of maintaining a league status, they moved James into midfield because they just saw an excellent footballer and they were like, right, let's just centralize this guy and get the most we can out of him. And they did. James was Wigan's best player last season. And when the season came to an end, they gave him the captain's armband for a game as a mark of respect and recognition of what he's given to the club in his loan spell and how good he really is. James did recently sustain an injury which he's sort of recovering from now back at Chelsea but he looks like he will stay at the club and challenge Azpilicueta for that right back spot under Lampard and Morris. Sorry Zepacosta. <laughs> if you want some context of just how good Reese James performs on a football pitch Go on the internet and check out some of his highlights. You'll see a whole scope of different sort of skills and attributes and just how he plays that's incredibly impressive. So I suggest you go and do that after this video. So let's take a look at some of Reese James's numbers. Last season for Wigan, Reese James scored three goals and registered three assists for the club, which is a pretty darn good return considering he spent a lot of the time playing as a defender. But if um, you take a look at some of his highlights, you'll see that often he puts in perfect crosses into the area that do not get met by an advancing Wigan player. And although this service has been incredibly good by Rhys James, the argument can be made that he was robbed of a lot of assists there from poor finishing or perhaps players just not occupying or advancing or attacking the right space. You know, it sounds kind of complicated, but when you look at it happen, you can see what I'm talking about. Reese was defensively sound last season, making three tackles and interceptions per game, which is very good. Also registering 2.3 clearances per game. Like I previously stated in this video, he's not the tallest defender in the world, but that does not stop him from being good in the air and winning two aerial duels per game. So he's dominant in sort of every defensive attribute. It's sort of distributed. He can kind of do it all quite comfortably in that sense. His speed, physical dominance and ability to win back possession makes him a sort of a titanic defender that any team would want in their back line. James puts in 1.6 key passes per game which is a very respectable number for a full back generally and he also puts in 1.6 crosses per game which in isolation is fine but I want to reiterate that that number would be even higher if some of this good service was met by a fellow Wigan player so although 1.6 is good it should be better in my opinion. 
Also on passing, Reese James completed 2.8 long balls per game. Now, <laughs> i go back to the highlights reel. If you watch some of these long balls that um, Reese James makes when he sprays these long diagonals um, that meets, I don't know, running wingers from midfield or whatever, it sort of looks like a young Cesc Fabregas. It's, he's got an awesome long pass on him. And yeah, like I said, that's demonstrated in his highlights or if you watched him play last season. Even though Reese James was deployed deep by Wigan last season, you know, in the defensive line or deep midfield, he still managed to pop off one shot per game and one successful take on per game. It's starting to look like this guy can do everything right. Winning back possession, tackles, interceptions, aerial duels, speed, dribbles, shots per game, long balls, crosses, just, yeah, good. <laughs> The final statistic I want to talk about today is the fact how Rhys James won seven man of the matches last season for Wigan. Now, think about how often a fullback wins man of the match for a team or with the 22 players on the pitch, a fullback wins it. It's kind of rare, right? Like, I can't really think of many times a Chelsea fullback has won man of the match, let alone maybe twice a season, let alone maybe three times a season seven times a season well last season i mean that is incredibly impressive he's shining he's being that light on the pitch um whether he's playing at right back or midfield incredibly impressive and again he's a teenager <laughs> right that is enough of the numbers for the moment so i'm sure you can gather from what i'm saying reese james is an incredible footballing talent right and He's got some sort of similarities in his story to say someone like Trent Alexander-Arnold, who is arguably the best right back in the Premier League, right? There's probably few people that would disagree with that. Trent used to be a midfielder and was moved to right back to get into the Liverpool team, but Reese's recent time at Wigan, he was moved to midfield to save them because he's such a good uh, footballer, essentially. But they both have similar qualities in terms of technical ability and speed getting up and down and, you know, uh, dead ball specialists. Reese can actually hit a mean free kick. Again, watch the highlights. He scored a goal. It was great. But you know what? For me, Reese James has more. And I'll tell you why. Because he can get up and down. He can do the crosses, the combinations, the recoveries, the good defending. But Reese James is a tank. You can see shades of sometimes Ruben Loftus cheek in him when he holds players up. Um, he's strong, he can dribble and do take on, so he can do these long passes and crosses, get up and down, but he can play with the ball at his feet and run at you. Trent Alexander Arnold is more of a sort of pokey give and go player. Sure, James can do that, but for me, he has more player attributes than Trent Alexander Arnold. Now, I'm not saying he's a better player right now, I'm saying I'm looking at how he's built for the Premier League, his physicality, um, and just his ceiling, and I look at the type of player he is, and for me, can Reese James become the best Premier League right back? Maybe. I think he's got all the talent in the world, and if he's given the chance at Chelsea under Frank and Jody, who knows what could happen. He's one of those very, very bright sparks. People are looking at him as a fullback as the same way they were looking at Callum Hudson-Odoi recently. The future is very bright indeed for Chelsea and for Reese James, hopefully. Right, guys, that's it for my video on Reese James today. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please do like the video, comment down below your thoughts. Do you think he's as good as I think he is? Do you think there's other options that Chelsea could be using? Do you think there's other right backs in the league? Do you think. What do you think? Do you think wan is better than Trent Alexander-Arnold? Because some people do. Anyway, just get down in the comments, guys. Yeah, sub if you're new. Don't really know what else to say. So I'll end it here. Enjoy the football, and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby